follow that, ain't it? But it's the truth. It's so hard for us to trust Him. Amen. Yes, it is. I preached one time about that old fish. That old fish might have been hungry. Fish gobbled up old Jonah. And hey, something said, don't chew him up. Don't yeah. chew him up. Just give him a ride. You know what? Ain't a doubt in my mind if I could talk to that fish. He's probably been dead for years. But if I could talk to him, he'd say, man, I didn't know what was speaking to me. And this is the craziest thing. First thing I'd ever eat that I didn't chew up. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy, but something told me not to chew it up. Just give it a ride. And I believe that with all of my heart, I preached one time. I believe after old, old, uh, uh, that fish delivered old Jonah to the shore, he turned around. Man, it may have been a bad day that day. They wasn't no, they wasn't no nothing to eat nowhere. He had hunted for something to eat. You don't tell me that, yes, sir. Jesus went out to his disciples one time. They was on a boat. He said, "Cast." He, they said, "Lord, we fished all night." He said, "Put it on the other side. Be obedient to me." Not a doubt in my mind that that big old fish, after he delivered Jonah, man, God fed him with some prime stuff, caviar, whatever he wanted. And I thank God for you here this morning. Uh, one of the biggest decisions you'll ever make in your life, one of the hardest decisions is whether or not to follow Jesus. Come on, preacher. Just simple and true. Come on. It's hard. I, it was hard for me. Hard to believe. Hard to trust. I used some scripture in the funeral yesterday, John 16, 33. Jesus was talking to his disciples and he was instructing them and they was having problems with trust. And he told them, he said, in me you'll have peace. Yeah. In me you'll have joy. Come on. He said, in the world you'll have tribulation. Come on, preacher. Yeah. But he said, boys, there's one thing I want to tell you before I stop. He said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Yeah. Yeah. I have overcome the world. Yeah. Yeah. And I use the illustration real quick. I used the illustration, the story I'd read a good while ago. This this man was terminally ear, ill with cancer. This the true story. He would, went through all the treatments, and and they was of no avail. He had, he had went. His wife had taken him for uh, a doctor's appointment, and had a little dog. It, it made me think about Bobby. Everywhere he went, that little dog went, and. Uh, so the doctor told him, he said, it's normally I don't let dogs in my waiting area, and, uh, most of all in my examining, examining room. He said, but you're an exception. He said, you can bring that little dog. And while he'd go back for his checkup, the wife would hold the dog and uh, said that the doctor was talking to him and he checked him out. And he said, how am I doing, doctor? The doctor said, well, said, things ain't looking too good, just be honest with you. He said, your blood counts going for the worse, he, blood pressure's dropping, your kidneys is, looks like they're beginning to fail and all like that. And he said, I, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. He said, doctor, it's what I wanted you to do. And the doctor looked at the gentleman. He said, is there, is there something else I can do for you? Is there any medication? He said, no. And the doctor was a Christian man. The, uh, the patient, of course, was a Christian man. He said, Doc, he said, I want to be honest with you. He said, I'm not afraid to die. He said, but I'm scared. I'm scared to die. He said, I, it, it, you know, something I ain't never done. Yeah. And that's the same way if, when, you, when the Lord's dealing with you and the Lord's speaking to you. It's, it's a frightful thing. You don't know what to expect. Come on, Bert. But anyway, he said, uh, Doc, do you have any idea what waits me on the other side? He said, no, really. He said, I've studied the Bible a lot. He said, you know what Revelation said and what the prophets said. He said, you, you know what the Word of God said. He said, yeah, I know that. He said, but I'm, I'm just scared of the initial dying part. Said as they, and, the, and the doctor was standing there holding to the door handle, getting ready to go out the door, and he's in his mind, he said, God, give me uplifting words. Give me uplifting words that I'd help this man. He said, he's so troubled. And about that time, I said that little dog started scratching on the door. Come on, Bert. And he said that 
dog was a whining and scratching on the door. He wasn't in the examining room. My doctor had already told the man, he said, I, I, you know, it, 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 I want to keep this place clean. But that doctor said for some reason he just decided he'd open the door and let that dog in. He said that little dog ran in that door and jumped on that man's lap with his head a shaking, his tail a wagging. And God said, there it is. He said, buddy, I got your answer. He said, what's that? He said, now you and I both know that that dog had never been in this examining room. Never before. But he was out there and he heard your voice. He didn't know what was in this room and he didn't know what took place in that room, but he knew that his master was in on the other side of that door and he had to go there. Church, I can't explain it, but I do know one thing. It's got to be good because the Father's voice has never led us in the wrong place. Yeah. The Lord's crying out to you this morning. It's scary, I know, it, 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 it's a big step, but I'm telling you what, oh, it'll on. be good yes, because it's your master's voice that's Thank calling. You, Heavenly Father, we come before you and we praise you for all that you've done. We thank you, Lord, for how that you've blessed. Lord, as we prepare a song, a verse, and a chorus here, I know that you spoke to hearts and minds and I know that there's folks under the sound of my voice that's been weighing this thing out for a long time. And maybe there's somebody here today, Lord, that this is the first time that they've, they've heard your voice, Lord, and they've, they've heard your call. Help them to see, Lord, that this is the best opportunity. This is the only opportunity. And that's when you're calling. Some folks might not understand it all. I don't understand it all. I don't know it all. But I do know one thing you do. As long as I'm by your side, Father, you'll take care of me. Oh, yeah. Heavenly Father, as, as you go over the sanctuary this morning, as you speak to hearts, I would even be confident, Lord, and I would even be secure in saying, there's somebody in the building this morning that just don't have that perfect peace. As Crystal came this morning, somebody else might have that. And Lord, everybody around may think that everything's all right. But deep inside that individual's heart, it's still not settled. And they would like for it to be settled this day. I pray, Lord, that you make your way around the sanctuary. Give folks the courage to slip up out of the seat. I know it's a big step. I know it's a tough one, Lord. But Father, you'll help them. I know you will. I've seen you do it so many times. And if folks is worried what they might say or how they ought to pray, let them know that you're not concerned about that. When they get up and make their way to the altar, you'll know what's on their heart, what's on their mind, so they won't have to open their mouth. They'll just do as Brother Ronnie said about Jonah. He didn't pray a big fancy prayer, but he said, Lord, help me. Save me. That's all Peter prayed. Save me, Lord. So as every head's bowed and every eye's closed, and the church has got a prayer on their heart, give somebody the courage as Zach and Jessica begins to sing. Give them the courage to come. It's in your name I pray. Savior calling. I can hear my Savior. Can 
you say this? Can you say this? Lord, I want to follow you. Why don't you come? I will follow where he leads me. I will follow. Why don't you come? days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea saying repent for the kingdom of God is at hand for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make his path straight he the same John had a raiment of camel's hair and leather and girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey then went out, all, out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. Yes. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism he said unto them, O generation of vipers who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come bring forth therefore fruit forth fruits meet for repentance and think not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father for I say unto you that God is able of those these stones to raise up children unto Abraham now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me He's mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. The same shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor. Gather his weed into the garner. But he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan to John to be baptized of him. John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Comest thou to me? Jesus answering and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Never have I fully been able to explain baptism. But Jesus said, it fulfills all righteousness. Amen. Then he suffered him, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. We would like for all those that wants to be baptized to come to the back now, if you would. If you're here today and uh, you've never been baptized, but you've been saved, you need to be baptized. If you're here today and you was baptized many years ago, and maybe you was a small child, and uh, if... It maybe it, it was something like Crystal said this morning. You know, you did, it, 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 just don't, it just wasn't real to you. And you want to be baptized? You're welcome. Folks that's walked away from God has come back to God and asked me, said, uh, do I need to be baptized again? I said, I can't answer that. Only you can. Amen. So if you're here this morning and you've repented, you've asked the Lord in your heart, uh, we'll baptize you. Now, if you haven't done that, it'll not do you a bit of good. Right. you got to repent first. you got to repent first. And uh, the Lord will bless you. So we're thankful as they prepare another song as we make our way to the back. God bless you today. Our, our baptistry is not real.